Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Oh, yes, it's The Savage Nation. Michael is off. Brian Sussman filling in from the left coast, where I've been listening to The Savage Nation live since the mid-90s when Michael began the phone number, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Michael, as you know, has been busy on his book tour, taking the day off. Countdown to Mecca. That's the book. It's available in stores now. I highly encourage you to read this book. It's a part of his trilogy. It's a novel. But my goodness, he raises so many points and issues that are With us today, Countdown to Mecca. We'll be talking more about that later in the program. Again, the phone number, 855-400-SAVAGE. Well, we have to give a nod, at least, to the train wreck. This occurred overnight in Philadelphia, seven dead, 200 injured. The photographs are everything that the media lives for, because if it bleeds, it leads. And some of these networks, these cable networks, have been going 24-7 on this. It's a tragedy. I understand. I get that. But is it our job on this program to report about that all day? No, it's not. Because you see what happens in the world of politics? The Obamas of the world and the Clintons of the world are watching this, and it gives them cover. It gives them an opportunity to skate for another day. They love this. Hillary, what is this, her 21st day without a question from the media? 21 days, no questions. She's running this campaign as tight as a tick. And then Obama. You know, basically what this is doing, the train wreck gives them cover so Obama can continue to ruin America and Hillary can prepare to ruin America, maybe even finish her off. Oh, yes, ruin America. The fundamental transformation of the United States of America. The fundamental transformation. The fundamental transformation. That's like you going to your wife, you know, who you, who you married and you thought she was beautiful And then, you know, a few years into the relationship, or maybe a few days into the relationship, as the case may be, you say, you know, I love everything about you, but I'd like to fundamentally transform you. That's not love. That's a divorce. That's a smack upside the head. That's what this guy's doing to this country. But I digress. This gives Obama cover from the potential loss. I mean, it's his biggest loss. This is his biggest loss of his presidency, fast track. Although now we're learning that the Senate is rallying to try to cobble something together. Maybe it's because the Democrats don't want their guy to look so bad. Fast track. I'm not a big fan. I'm not a big fan. I'm all for free trade. I'm all for free enterprise. I'm all for economic opportunities here in the United States. But as I look at what I know about fast track, I fear this gives the president way too much authority. I know what the Democrats want. The Democrats want the sweeteners like uh, this particular thing called Trade Adjustment Assistance. Fanciful name. What does that mean? It would be a program for helping displaced American workers. In other words, if your job goes overseas, hey, we've got a program for you. It's called unemployment and retraining at the taxpayer expense. They want stuff like that added into the bill. See, this train wreck gives Obama an opportunity to, for example, um, dodge the bull out on a number of issues. For example, how Obamacare sucks. No, Obamacare, folks, it's failing left, right, and center. And I'm broadcasting uh, today from California, same place Michael does his show. California's version of Obamacare is underwater. It's just one of the latest states that has set up an Obamacare exchange and now has huge problems. The problem being money. I'm thinking of places like Oregon, where they have a similar situation, Maryland, and today we learn Hawaii is in the same situation. In California, the version of Obamacare is called Covered California. The the theory was it would be self-sustaining this year, but of course, it's not even close to meeting that goal. Enrollment ended April 30th. There's no money coming from Washington. California received over a billion dollars from the federal government to get Obamacare up and running. State law says, nope, Sacramento, our capital, can't spend any money to keep the exchange afloat. So what's going to happen? 
this sucker's underwater. This year, it's going to be $80 million underwater. And now we find out Hawaii, same thing. Barack Obama's home state, by the way. (laughs) I could make a Kenyan joke here, but I I won't. (laughs) It's too easy. Uh, Barack Obama is home state of Hawaii. They're shutting down their state-based version of Obamacare. It's called the Hawaii Health Connection. Nobody's signing up. They said they'd have 70,000 people by now, and that would be enough to sustain it. They have half that. They have half that. New enrollments end Friday. They don't have it. So what are they going to do? They received $204 million in federal grants. They can't make it. This is what's happening all over the country because these liberal policies never pan out. They never pan out. At some point in time, they run out of taxpayer money. And that's exactly what's happening here. So again, the train wreck provides Obama with cover for things like this. Obamacare is failing. It also provides him cover for a statement that his his Secretary of Education made. Oh, this is juicy. Guys, if you could, get ready for clip three. This is Secretary of Education Arnie Duncan. Now, I host a morning show in San Francisco. Savage was actually a guest on my show this morning. And I played this clip for him. It was really early in the morning. He he just woke up. He was uh, having a coffee and feeding the birds as he likes to do outside his uh, beautiful estate. And (laughs) I play this for him. (laughs) And live on the air, I hear him say, oh, God. This is amazing. This really is amazing. The the Secretary of State, Arnie Duncan, he basically opened up kimono and revealed what the liberals really want. It's not enough that they want K through 12 education and then free college down the line. What they want, and then, you know, on top of that, they always tell us they want preschool as well. They want to have your kid 24 7. They want to have live in schools, boarding schools. I'm not making this up. You have to hear cut uh, clip three, and you will do it right now. The one idea I threw out that I uh, wanted to sort of road test it with the kids who they thought is the idea of public boarding schools. And that's a little bit of a you know, different idea or a controversial idea. But the question is, do we have some children where there's not a mom, there's not a dad, there's not a grandma, there's just nobody home? And there are certain kids we should have 24-7 to really create a safe environment and give them a chance. Give them a chance to be successful. There's a smattering of applause. As I was looking at the videotape, that's Arnie Duncan, Secretary of Education. He wants boarding schools, public boarding schools, for kids who don't have a mom, don't have a dad, or don't have anybody watching them because they're on crack or God knows what, right? They want to take your kid and educate them. Now, I can tell you, within this audience, you have a lot of patriots who have come here from other countries. I'm thinking people from Cuba. Former Soviet Union, Vietnam, China. I've met many of you. This smacks of communism, and I know you're listening to this thinking, my God, what is happening to my country? Hey, we're saying the same thing. What is happening to this country? That's the Secretary of Education, Arnie Duncan, wants a public boarding school. 855-400-7282, 855-400-7282. We'll talk about that on the program as well this afternoon. Uh, We also have to let you know that um, Hillary's caught in yet another quid pro quo. See, the train wreck gives them cover. We're going to talk about the issues of the day because the cable networks are going nonstop with the train wreck. Train wreck's terrible. I get it. But what's happening in this country is terrible. And we've got to put out the red alert before we lose this nation. Hillary's latest quid pro quo has to do with Boeing. Oh, yeah, a little pay for play with the Clinton Foundation. Once again, the Clinton Foundation. We'll talk about that on the Savage Nation. We've also got another story, and this involves a real halfwit. This is a Democrat representative from Georgia. His name's Hank Johnson. He's talking about the state of affairs in this country, and we have all the we have the have nots, as he calls them, the have nots. Oh, Obama was out there talking talking. Geez, Talking down rich people like nobody's business yesterday. As if he hasn't gotten rich by sheer luck. But this Hank Johnson guy is talking about uh, the have-nots. And he says, if we don't put together some government programs for these people, 
the have-nots are going to rise up and it's going to be just like Baltimore. And he uses Baltimore as an example of a, of a place where it's not the cops, it's we need more government programs. Baltimore has been run by Democrats since 1967. You would think it would be a utopia by now. It's not. Are you kidding me? Anyway, you'll hear that audio coming up on the broadcast as well. And then, of course, Michael Savage off, Brian Sussman filling in today. Countdown to Mecca. It's available in stores now. When I interviewed Michael, and you're going to hear the interview a little bit later in the program. We'll pull it from our morning show in San Francisco. I I asked Michael this question. I was serious because he's written so many books. Uh, You could say he's a prolific author. And I know the kind of time it takes to, to do a show like this on a regular basis. And I asked him the very serious question. Where do you find the time to write all these books? See, unlike a lot of people in the media, and, and I've written a couple books, I know how demanding it is. But there are a lot of people in the media that you hear of, that you perhaps know from television or whatnot, who come out with a book. They don't write a single word. They have other people writing the book which I think is cheap. But they take all the credit and all the glory. Savage doesn't do that. He writes these books. Now, Countdown to Mecca, well, this is serious stuff. And already, you can see, I've, I've heard it, the mainstream media is trying to, to uh, totally misinterpret this book. Oh, he wants to blow up Mecca. No. Are you kidding me? If you read the book, and I hope you will, and I know you will, it's about trying to stop the blowing up of Mecca. And it's a page-turner. And it's going to take you on a journey where even the seemingly innocent aren't always innocent and the loyal aren't always loyal. I mean, this is the kind of stuff great novels are made of. But on top of that, if you have been to San Francisco or if you've never been to San Francisco, this book does a brilliant job of giving you a tour of the city. And it's the tour of the city that only someone who lives here would really know about. So, obviously, highly recommended. Countdown to Mecca. Let's come back, take some of your calls. 855-400-7282. That's 855-400-7282. Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage on this, The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage. The doctor is out today. However, I spoke with him on my morning show in San Francisco on KSFO earlier today, and you're going to hear that interview coming up on the program. Don't forget the book, Countdown to Mecca, available in stores now. I spoke with Michael about the book earlier today, and it is a page-turner, and it's so timely. I mean, the perfect time for that book is now, given world events. Uh, The train wreck today, back east. This is a train wreck that the liberals are using to cover up their train wreck of the United States of America. One thing we mentioned in the last segment, and the callers are all over the place, coming in as you would expect. Obama's education secretary, Artie Duncan, yesterday, he was speaking at the National Summit on Youth Violence Prevention. And he... He he opened kimono and revealed all. As far as what these liberals believe, he proposed the idea of public boarding schools. Public boarding schools. Not for kids who are orphans, but for kids who don't have, hmm, maybe parents as active in their life as, as the government thinks they should be. Let's go to Matthew, WMAL, Maryland. Matthew, you're on the Savage Nation. Go right ahead. Hey, thanks for taking my call. Um, yeah, I just think the throwing around, uh, I listen to the station every once in a while, and I think it's like all this jump into the, to the communist uh, bullet point is, is a, it's a little bit hasty because what their argument would easily be in this instance is that you're either going to pay now for a boarding school or you're going to pay later for a boarding prison. So they're going to easily win an argument in that sense because you're subsidizing the prison system. So if people enter the prison systems early, you know, even pre, uh, you know, people who are being charged with crimes as an adult, even though they're not, I mean, that happens quite often. You have very bad crime happening in these places, 
And their argument would very easily be, you're going to pay now or pay later kind of thing. So when, when I think of this, this issue, I mean, wasn't there a program called Boys Town years ago? And, and where do you stand on that in comparison to a communist uh, calling somebody a communist? What would you call that program, Boys Town? Well, that was, I mean, but that was a privately run charitable organization. It wasn't a gover- government program. And you know how these government programs work. I mean, look at the way our public education system works right now. I mean, and they're making it. They're making it more and more difficult for homeschoolers to opt out, and, and they they want your kid twenty four seven. This is a brainwashing operation, Matthew. I appreciate your call out of KSFO, but comparing Boys Town to what Arnie Duncan's putting forward is uh, like comparing apples and artichokes. Let's go to Gary at WJR Michigan. D- Gary, you're on the air. Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in. Go ahead. Yeah, Brian. I'd like to compare them to the Hitler Youth of the forties and the Nazi regime. I mean, that's just taking over and sequestering the kids. Bingo. And when I spoke to Michael on my program in San Francisco this morning, those were the first words out of his mouth. It smacks of Nazism. It smacks of the Soviet Union. You hit it on the head, Gary. Thanks for your call on the Savage Nation. Here's Gail calling out of San Francisco. Gail, you're on the air. Go ahead, please. Hi, Brian. I heard you and Katie Green talking about the subject this morning and with Michael yes yeah the first thing I thought of was it's orphanages I mean you're just gonna rip these children out of what little home they might have and you're also taking away any responsibility on the parents part it's yes just terrifying yes and that's what these liberals want to do they think we're too stupid to raise our kids properly they want to have the whole Megillah K through 12 no they want them 24 7 thanks for your call I appreciate it We're going to come back in just a moment. Uh, Michael Savage, of course, taking the day off. Brian Sussman filling in. Think about this. A plane bound for Amman, Jordan, goes down to the Caspian Sea. The crash yields no survivors save the Russian mercenary who hijacked the flight at a cast containing an agent of unprecedented destructive potential missing from the wreckage. That's from Michael Savage's book, Countdown to Mecca. We're going to talk about that in just a few minutes. Stay tuned. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Savage Nation. Michael Savage off Brian Sussman in. Phone number 855-400-SAVAGE, 855 855- 400 7282. Michael, of course, busy with his book tour, Countdown to Mecca. He was on my program in San Francisco earlier this morning. We're going to play that interview for you in just a bit here on the program. But Countdown to Mecca, what's interesting, all the more reason to purchase it. And I highly suggest you purchase it at a bookstore. At a bookstore. You know, here in San Francisco, uh, without question, Michael has written more books than anybody living in this city. You've got a lot of very artistic, creative people in this city. You've got a few authors in this city. No one's written more books than Michael. And yet, at the same time, I don't believe there's one bookstore, and there are many bookstores in San Francisco, I don't believe there's one that's carrying this book right now. Just out. Go to your bookstore, order it. Put them on notice. Oh, sure, you can order it online. But there's nothing like putting these bookstores on notice. These are. This is what they do. With certain authors, they'll bury the book. (laughs) I was talking about this with Michael. He said, said, yeah, you know, sometimes they'll take my books and they'll bury it in in the women's hygiene section of the store. (laughs) This is what they do. So again, countdown to Mecca. We'll be talking more about that as the program unfolds. The train wreck, obviously... Terrible in Philadelphia, seven dead, 200 injured. It looks like a war zone for sure. What's interesting is this. Uh, The Philadelphia commuter train going from D.C. to New York. A Philadelphia commuter train was hit by a projectile about 20 minutes before the Amtrak train derailed. So a, a different train altogether was hit by a projectile about 20 minutes before the Amtrak train derailed a few miles up the track. Now, what was going on there? We're looking at a uh, spokesperson for the Southeastern Pennsylvania Transportation Authority, SEPTA, says they don't know what the projectile was. 
Okay. I think it's rather curious. I think it's also interesting that the FBI has warned of train derailments. And, um, of course, when they warn us about train derailments, when the, when the federal government warns us about terrorism of any kind, it's usually, well, we're worried about those white Christian men who are cops. God forbid, in this particular case, they ruled out terrorism right off the bat. Nope, no terrorism here. We don't know what the cause was, but it wasn't terrorism. No, 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 no. Don't even think about going Islamic on us, folks. Can't do that. No, no terrorism here. I just found that amazing. They didn't know what caused it, but they ruled out terrorism right off the bat. Well, we know a little bit more. The train was going around a curve at 100 miles an hour. Which makes me wonder, when we get high-speed rail, here in California, they are pushing for this high-speed rail the governor of this state, Jerry Brown, who's now in his fourth term. We have a law in California that says you're only allowed to have two terms. He gets four. And by the way, his interpretation of the law was, well, you know, that law was passed after I was governor the first time around. Can you believe that? These liberals don't care about the spirit of the law. They see the law as something that they can defy, get around, adeptly, swiftly, Constitutional attorneys like Barack Obama, he doesn't love and herald the Constitution. He sees it as a document that he could destroy legally, and he's doing it before our very eyes. A lot of people want to weigh in on this Arnie Duncan story, and it, it should not surprise me. Because what this guy, the Department of Education Secretary, said yesterday is is incredible. I'm going to replay the clip and get to calls in just a moment. So stay tuned for that. There was another statement yesterday made by another Democrat. This is Congressman Hank Johnson from Georgia. He's talking about the poor. I guess this is, uh, you know, let's, let's be concerned about the poor week or something. And we are concerned about the poor. And we're concerned about the poor because the government tries to take care of them, and all they do is entrap them, imprison them. That's what Arnie Duncan wants to do with schools that are boarding schools, public boarding schools. Just take these people and entrap them. Do you realize we take these people and entrap them? You're going to be brainwashing them. They are going to come out to the most weak, politically correct, do-nothings. Oh, every agenda being pushed by the liberals, they'll be able to quote, it'll roll right off their tongue. It's a dream come true. Here's Congressman Hank Johnston, guys. We're going to play clip four here in just a second. He's saying the problem in Baltimore, you know, is really not the cops. That's what he said. It's that we're just not taking care of the poor properly. And if we don't watch out, they're going to rise up and riot. Listen to this. And I'll tell you, the free marketers have been uh, winning of late. And uh, it's to the detriment of this country. And if we're not careful, the have-nots in this country will rise up like the people in Baltimore. You can say that it's in response to police. Uh, it's a reaction to uh, a police uh, excessive use of force. But actually, what happened in Baltimore stems from, uh, from deeper economic issues. Deeper economic issues that I thought the Democrats have been addressing all these years. How many trillions have we spent on the war on poverty? We have... By percentage, just as many people in poverty today as we had then. All of these liberal machinations, all of these liberal utopian policies, they're not working, are they? No, they are not. Now, if you're just joining us on The Savage Nation, Brian Sussman filling in. Michael's off. We've got an interview that we're going to play with Michael. I, I conducted it on my morning show in San Francisco today. We're going to play that to during the next hour, so you want to stay tuned for that. But here is the clip that everybody is going nuts over. And rightly so. This is Artie Duncan, Secretary of Education. The one He's idea I threw out that I uh, wanted to sort of road test it with the kids too, I thought, is the idea of public boarding schools. And that's a little bit of a you know, different idea or a controversial idea. But the question is, do we have some children where there's not a mom, there's not a dad, there's not a grandma, there's just nobody home? And there are certain kids we should have 24-7 to really create a safe environment and give them a chance. <laughs> give them a chance to be successful. You know, that, that smattering of applause, it's like people... Oh, wow, I like that idea. Should I clap? Maybe I shouldn't clap. It's pretty rad. Yeah, I like oh, oh, oh. 
Andrew's calling out of WABC. Andrew, thanks for joining us. Doug is in Colorado Springs, KVOR. Doug, you're on the air. Thank you for calling. Uh, hello, Brian. Uh, it's great to have you fill in. Uh, I read your book, uh, Climate Gate, many years ago, and uh, you're an excellent author yourself. Uh, Thank you. This reminds, this reminds me of, uh, uh, of um, the great classic by Aldous Huxley's Brave New World, and it sends chills up your spine to think what these people want to do to this country. It is just appalling. And it uh, also makes me think a little bit of uh, Anne Wren's uh, Brave New World, or um, uh, Atlas Shrugged. Uh, yes. Uh, and I will be out there to purchase Michael's book at the local book, uh, Barnes & Noble, here in Colorado Springs. Yes, make sure you do that, and, and let's put all these bookstores on alert that they, make sh that they need to make sure they have many copies available. Because this is another bestseller, and I appreciate your call here on the Savage Nation. You know, there's something else in the news. And again, the train wreck is providing cover for the many train wrecks occurring before our very eyes via this administration. But does this bother you the way it bothers me? We have a report this morning. And I should say this afternoon. It came in this morning. But this is from InfoWars. Uh, Paul Joseph Watson writing. Special forces out of Fort Bragg are training with SWAT officers in South Carolina. They're doing house-to-house -house raids. So these are all you know, simulations, but they're doing house-to-house -house raids. So I love our special forces. I think you guys are awesome. I love our police. Thank you for being there when I've needed you in the past. But when I see them working together on domestic soil... I'm troubled by this. To me, this is an unnerving sign of the militarization of domestic law enforcement. Something that I believe the liberals have wanted. I believe they want to federalize our police force. You look at what's happening. They want new federal guidelines. It's the first step towards a federal police force. Of course, Michael and I have talked about this bef before. We already have somewhat, something like that. It's all the gangs who were able to take over the streets of, for example, Baltimore and Ferguson and Oakland and these other places and just run wild. With, with people like mayors, this particular case, Baltimore, say, no, we need to give them room to destroy. So these late night and pre-dawn exercises involve the 3rd Special Forces Group out of Fort Bragg, North Carolina. They've been running since May 8th. They're going to conclude on Friday. Uh... To me, this is a violation of Posse Comitatus. Now, Posse Comitatus was, this is going back into the 1800s, President Rutherford Hayes. We would not be able to use, the, the law was, the act entails, the fa uh, creates, creates a fact. We will not have the military use on domestic soil. That's just not going to happen. That's against the law. Now, I know some of you listeners are pretty bright, and you do a lot of reading, and you say, well, didn't that go bye-bye when Obama signed the National Defense Authorization Act, a.k.a. the NDAA? He did this on, isn't this interesting? If, if indeed, he voided Posse Comitatus, wouldn't this be the perfect time to do it? Sign the law on New Year's Eve, December 31st. That's what he did, 2011. Who's paying attention to the news on New Year's Eve? So what it does is, uh, it was passed in the House, passed in the Senate, he signs it. It makes it legal to incarcerate U.S. citizens without recourse to any form of judicial process. Did you hear what I just said? It makes it legal to incarcerate U.S. citizens without, without recourse to any form of judicial process. Now, they say it's for terrorism. But one of the provisions in the NDAA, and I'm just telling you what I'm reading right from the law, uh, you could imprison quote, any person who has committed a belligerent act. Now, that seems very broad to a lot of people. And as a result, a lot of people are very concerned about this. So again, I love my special forces and I love my police. But when I see them training together on domestic soil in, you know, going house to house for raids. And by the way, when they're doing these raids, every time they do these, these simulations here in the United States of any sort, they're, they're never going after 
the real enemy of America today, are the real foreign enemy, the Islamic terrorists, they're always going after you know, the skinheads. They're always going after the KKK. They're always going after the white Christians, the gun owners. So we're going to talk more about that this morning, or I should say this afternoon, here on The Savage Nation. William is calling from the left coast. William, you're on the air we were just talking about all the money that's been spent on the war on poverty, and what have we gotten out of it, William? Hey, this sure is a treat listening to you twice in one day, Brian. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I was just listening to your comments about the war on poverty, which has been fought for the last 50 years, and like you just pointed out, it really hasn't changed anything. So we should take the advice of our president, who said that if you try the same thing for 50 years and it hasn't worked, maybe we should try something different. Yeah, wouldn't that be a nice thought? Try something different. Appreciate your call. Lori's in Texas, WBAP. Lori, we were also talking about how the Secretary of Education is fond of the idea of public boarding schools. Your thoughts, please. Yes, uh, in regard to that, it seems like that you would be creating a problem because you're you're ripping kids away from their families at, at five years old if they're going to kindergarten there. And it seems like that they would have a problem bonding. They bonded to their family. And now they're being torn away from their family uh, to live in an institutional uh, type of environment. It seems like you'd be creating a lot of sociopaths that way. Uh, and maybe that's the goal. Maybe they want uh, sociopaths that are properly indoctrinated so they can further the transformation of America. Lori, thanks for your call. Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage on this. The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Brian Sussman, filling in for Michael Savage on this, The Savage Nation. Michael, of course, very busy with the book tour regarding Countdown to Mecca, which was released yesterday. It's the final episode of the trilogy that started with Abuse of Power and A Time for War. So this is Countdown to Mecca, and so many people have been waiting for this. Now, you're going to hear the liberals talking about this. Oh, it's a plot to destroy Islam's holy city. No, 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 don't listen to that. It's a plot to stop the destruction of Islam's Holy City. This is a book with twists and turns, and it's a page turner. We'll talk more about it. If we could, please, let's go to David, listening on WJR in Detroit. David, we've been talking about the train wreck, which is the United States of America under Barack Obama. Go right ahead, please. Hey, brother, thanks for taking my call. You know, I, 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 what, what I want to say is that What's happening in America and what a lot of people are fearful is going to happen, it's been happening. Growing up in Detroit, I can tell you situation, growing up in Detroit, there was two blocks, two houses on my block that were selling drugs. They did a sting. They came with helicopters. They came with tanks. And they shut down the block. And they arrested every meal, every meal on that block including me. I was 15 at the time. They took us all to jail, right? They went mm -hmm. to every house, even the law abiders and even the law abiding citizens. People on our block been calling about the two trouble houses, right? But when they came, they arrested everybody. Now, what about our freedom? What about us? And, and you know, it, it, it didn't even hit the news. But my point is that you worry about something happening, it's already happened. It's been happening. And, 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 and David, my guess is you're, you're, not, you're, not, you're not making a racial statement. You're not saying this was motivated by race. You're saying this was the DEA swooping in and taking everybody with them. Brother, brother, that's what I'm trying to tell you. It's bigger than race. It's bigger All right, than listen, race. David, you make a point that we need to expand upon, to put it in context, and we will, I promise. By the way, coming up in the next hour, we've had a, we have an interview with Michael Savage, who's off today. Brian Sussman filling in on this, the Savage Nation. Warning: The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Yes, it is The Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in for Dr. Savage. I've been a listener to the Savage Nation since the 90s. I live in the San Francisco Bay Area, work on the pro on the, sh- the station that he essentially founded, KSFO, and it's a pleasure to be filling in today. Dr. Savage has been very busy with his book tour because the new book is out, and I know literally thousands of you have been anticipating this, the countdown to Mecca, so it's, it's the final episode of this trilogy that began with Abuse of Power and A Time for War, and... I will tell you something. Michael has told me, I've asked him the question. You're going to hear an interview I conducted with Michael a little bit later this hour. It's an interview from this morning. But I was asking Mike, why this book? Why all of these books? He's a prolific author. And he told me I had to go to the novel for this particular book and this particular content to get some of my ideas across that I'm reluctant to state on the radio for fear of boycotts, etc. So, yes, it's a novel, but it is so timely. In fact, the Washington Times has called this power fiction tinged with terrorism and intrigue and combined with an old-school rough-and-tumble journalist as its hero. So, again, get the book. Countdown to Mecca. Can't recommend it highly enough. Crazy stuff in the news. Now, obviously, the train wreck. Terrible. Uh, Train wreck, they're telling us now. The train was trying to go around a curve at 100 miles an hour. I don't know what was happening. Uh, Right off the bat, they told us it's not terrorism. Don't worry, not terrorism. Even though they didn't know what, what, what occurred, it wasn't terrorism. So the train wreck is giving cover to the Obama administration and Hillary for their undoing of America. The one piece of audio we played in the first hour, and we'll play it again, has to do with the Secretary of Education, Arne Duncan, declaring that he wants public boarding schools. He thinks that would be a great idea. A lot of people want to talk about that, and we'll get to your calls. You've got Congressman Hank Johnson from Georgia saying, the poor are going to rise up. You'll hear that coming up as well here on The Savage Nation. We've also got Obama yesterday just, man, going after the wealthy in this country. So I guess it's going to be, you know, the haves versus the have-nots. That's, that's what you're going to hear from all of these sound bites we're about to play. The haves versus the have-nots. I, I hear something that I've never heard before in my lifetime. People talk about gentrification. Oh, the rich are moving in. Oh, the rich whiteies are moving in. The rich, different colorees. It doesn't matter. Isn't it good when the rich move in and expand their influence? That means more people are making it, right? That means more people are going up from the lower classes to the upper classes. Isn't that a good thing? When I see neighborhoods changing, isn't that a good thing? That means there are more people doing well. To me, the liberals will paint it this way because they don't, they, either they don't understand money or they really do, but they're so hell-bent on socialism, they want to ignore the truth, which may be the, the case. But they make, they make it seem as if money is a zero-sum game. There's only so much, and if the rich get theirs, that means you're not going to get yours. They don't understand that wealth is created. So here's Obama yesterday. He's calling successful businessmen and women society's lottery winners. This is clip 15. Take a listen. The top 25 hedge fund managers made uh, more than all the kindergarten teachers in the country. So I'm not, when I say that, I'm not saying that because I dislike hedge fund managers or I think they're evil. Uh, I'm saying that you're paying a lower rate than a lot of folks who are making $300,000 a year. Here we go again. Here we go again. Yeah, he he doesn't dislike the ones that uh, pay to play with Democrats doesn't like those kind. He likes those kind. Uh, this is absolutely ridiculous. It's, they don't, he does, wealth is created. And by the way, those hedge fund man- managers, and I know plenty living here in the Silicon Valley, uh, these are people that have a certain skill that the rest of us don't have. 
You know, we all have this relationship with money that's rather interesting, isn't it? You can have a Ph.D. and be clueless when it comes to money. You'll spend 110% of what you make. And you can be someone who just legally immigrated into this country, no formal education whatsoever, and you understand money. You know how to make it. You know how to save it. You know how to leverage it. You know how to take calculated risk with it. I mean, some have the ability and some do not. Now, those who do not can learn. I mean, it's just like all of the engineers. You look at every study that comes out right now regarding best majors, majors that have the best money coming out of college, best majors for making the greatest amount of money during your lifetime. They're all in engineering, science, technology, engineering, math, STEM. It's all of that. Now, if we did a better job, Arnie Duncan, Secretary of Education, of teaching our kids how to do math instead of this common core dreck, maybe we'd have a chance. We wouldn't have to import our engineers. I'm in the Silicon Valley. I look everywhere. All these people on the H-1B visas because we can't create enough here. So we bring them over, pay them less. We'd hire domestically if we could. We don't have enough people in these engineering schools because we're too busy teaching these kids you know, about uh, the sexual agenda. Redefining morality. Teaching them God knows what in these schools. And so now Arnie Duncan wants to create schools where they've got them 24-7. Do you really think these are going to be institutions of higher learning? Where they're going to be teaching them math and teaching them science? No, it's going to be a total indoctrination. So they'll have drones. Snap of the fingers, boom, they're ready to play. Listen to Obama continue here. Let's go to clip 17. He's talking about the rich being society's lottery winners. Listen to this. If we can't ask from society's lottery winners to just make that modest investment, then really this conversation is for show. Okay, if, you know if, what? If you're, we can't You're for ask, show. You're for show, and I'll, I'll go when it comes to socialism. Here's the deal. You look at the statistics, statistics, we can dig them out. The top 10%. You're in the top 10% of wage earners, I believe, if you're making 130 k or more. Okay, that's a lot of money. I get it. You're in the top 10% if you're making 130 k uh, t- I can pull up the statistics, but I believe the top 10% are paying about half of all federal taxes. It may be more than that. It may be 70%. I'll dig up the stats for you. The rich pay their fair share. And by the way, just because you have a high salary does not mean you're rich. That just means you have a high income. You could be highly leveraged having that income. Rich, to me, is a person that has enough in the way of assets that they don't have to work. And they probably had to work their behind off to get in that particular position. All right, let's go to the one. There's more to talk about, and we will, I promise you, including, what was the story I saw here? This was... This was a wild one. The Florida funeral home? This is, this is nuts. I'm watching. I've got the big bank of monitors here in my studio. So I'm monitoring all the news channels. I just saw this on Fox. Two Florida funeral home workers are in trouble, as they should be. They were driving the body of a lieutenant colonel from our military to his memorial service. And they stopped at a Dunkin' Donuts. I'm looking at the video. There's the big black hearse in the back. There's a casket draped with an American flag. They're stopped at a Dunkin' Donuts. Are you kidding me? What are they thinking? And on top of that, you have a veteran in the back. It's getting crazy out there, folks. It is getting nutso. All right, let's go to the lines. How about... Okay, I like this. I like this. And I'm out here on the left coast. Mike is on the other coast. WABC. Okay, so you got this mayor in New York City, de Blasio, and uh, he has a lot in common with this, with this Arnie Duncan guy you're saying. Go ahead, Mike. You're on the air. He wants free uh, daycare for every citizen, regardless of income level in New York City. So what a lot of the people and a lot of the liberals... And white liberals don't understand is that, but you understand it, entitlements are good, but entrapment is not good. So, um, Duncan, what he's doing is he's creating generational poverty, one generation after another, on the government programs, babies born out of wedlock, 
young moms in the inner city, African-American and Latino often, with not a father in the home. So instead of addressing that problem, they're actually throwing fuel on the problem and exasperating the problem. We have to ask, why are they poor? Obama's economic policies are failures, and we have to get to the root of the problem, not just string them along and exasperate the problem. I, I'm with you on that. I appreciate your call. By the way, can I just ask you one more question, Mike? Yes. Oh, did I look? Mike, yeah. When I look at this de Blasio guy, and I'm thinking New York is about to go to hell in a handbasket, so to speak, in terms of crime and poverty and, and great ruin, just like it was before Giuliani came into office. Your thoughts on that, please, because you're there and I'm not. What I do is when I meet people that are newer, that maybe only have been in the city for 15 years or less, I always say, oh, you don't know what it was like pre-Giuliani, and they really don't understand it. <laughs> like, it, it was one of the biggest turnarounds ever, oh, and it yeah. was amazing, borderline miraculous, what Giuliani did to the city to turn it around, how quickly, and that was one of the reasons why I became more conservative and Republican and supported Giuliani. It was spectacular, his leadership, and when he ran for president, the irony is he was a great leader on September 11th, but many people nationally didn't know how great a mayor he was. And yeah, he was, he was fed. Mike, I appreciate your call. I remember I, I would work in, uh, I, I worked in New York City for CBS News on the CBS Morning Show uh, pre-Giuliani and then during Giuliani's tenure. And I watched before my very eyes that city turn around, and it was fantastic indeed. Hey, I want to tell you, Brian Sussman, by the way, filling in for Michael Savage, I want to tell you about Countdown to Mecca. It is in the stores now. And a lot of you have been waiting for this book. It's the final episode of the trilogy that Michael wrote, Abuse of Power, a Time for War, now Countdown to Mecca. Don't buy the liberal attack on this book. Uh, they're going to say, my God, he's calling for the attack of Mecca, the countdown. It's going to blow it up. No. If you read the book, and I know thousands and thousands of you will, it's about stopping the, the, uh, the, the nuclear war that would erupt if Mecca was bombed. So it's, it's a fantastic book. Just like Michael's uh, Michael's uh, novels, Page Turner, big time. Buy it in the stores. Countdown to Mecca. Brian Sussman in on this, the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now eight five five four hundred Savage eight five five four hundred seven two eight two Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica dot com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call eight hundred B U I C O I N. Countdown to Mecca is in the stores now. Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage. Uh, Michael, of course, out on the book tour, and I'm filling in for him today, but he'll be back tomorrow. Uh, Michael Savage was on my program in San Francisco this morning, so in just a few minutes on the Savage Show, you'll hear an interview with Michael Savage. Go figure. We were talking about this just a moment ago, and I told you I would find the stats, and here we've got them for you. So Obama, it's this big war against the haves, the achievers. He said they're life's lottery winners. Now, for those making a nice income, and for those of you who have money in the bank, and for those of you who maybe even gone further with your money and now you're managing hedge funds, you've worked your rear ends off to get there. That's a skill set and a talent, and you've grounded out, you've taken risks, and there have been sleepless nights, and I know a lot of CEOs, for example, in the Silicon Valley, and these are guys who are working seven days a week. When they go on vacation, can I tell you something? They've got that laptop with them out in the hotel deck. They're working night and day. Top 10% of wage earners in the United States. I've got the actual stats here. Listen to this. Top 10% make $125,000 a year or more. They're paying 70% of all taxes. The quote-unquote rich pay their fair share. Let's go to John, WMAL in D.C. John, thanks for joining us on the Savage Nation. Yeah, living in the Washington area for over 50 years, I'm a transplant from New Jersey, which is even worse than the liberalism down down here. But uh, I've observed, uh, I live on a cul-de-sac with neighbors that work for uh, uh, mostly the federal government that never go to work. There are no shows when they go in. 
they leave uh, somewhere around 9 o'clock, and they're home by 3. Uh, these are people that work for the Department of Agriculture. They've been there for, you know, over 20 years. To put, uh, NASA NASA is no agency anymore. Forget about it. I mean, the president wrote that off when he put this uh, new guy in as the first uh, black NASA administrator, who uh, his job, first and foremost, and uh, that's the words that were used, he was supposed to uh, help the uh, the Arab culture uh, get back to where it once was. You know? Yeah, remember that? Remember, that was going to be the job of NASA first and foremost, right? Work with these people that are making uh, over $125,000 a year. They're not rich. Uh, this one family, the little guy that works for NASA, he's got three kids in, in three different colleges. He's paying out-of-state out of tuition for two of them. One goes to the University of Maryland. This is I live in Maryland, actually. And uh, so I guess he's paying the regular rate there. But uh, 125000 it seems like the, the price for... Uh, the, or the income for a rich person has come down, and the cost of living, I'm a retiree, I'm on Social Security, I'm not getting uh, much money from the government, and the prices on the food and, and gas, gas is going up again. Uh, and they, they, they're talking about uh, raising the gas tax because it's not high enough. I guess they want to make it $5 a gallon. That's their aim, and that's been their aim. But, but anyway, John, your point is well taken. First of all, 130000 is hardly rich. It's a good wage, but there are too many slackers working for the government at all levels who are pulling down that kind of dough, and they're hardly doing the work that uh, others are for it. I, I get your point. point. But again, okay, let's let's go. Thanks for your call. Let's go to this one. How about the top? Uh, let's go to the top five percent of all wage earners. Top five percent. They're making one hundred twenty-five thousand, uh, one hundred seventy-five thousand a year. Top five percent. They pay sixty percent of all federal income taxes. Come on now. Savage's new book is out. It's the countdown to Mecca. It is a page turner that takes the readers on a journey. And I'm telling you something you need to go to the bookstores to buy. We're going to talk about this. You're going to hear coming up an interview with Michael Savage conducted on my morning radio show. That's next. You don't want to miss it right here on this, The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Brian Sussman, in for Michael Savage. Michael will be back tomorrow. He's got the book tour. The big book came out yesterday, Michael Savage, and the countdown to Mecca. And, of course, this is the final episode in this trilogy that many of you have been waiting for, although it's probably kind of sad because when you read it, it's like, okay, well, it's over. Darn. <laughs> I want more. But this is a page-turner. And, of course, the liberals can't stand it. And in my city of San Francisco, where I work with Michael, and I've been listening to his show since the 90s, so we're all on the same station, KSFO. I do the morning show, and Mike's, of course, uh, held down the top slot in the afternoons forever. But the bottom line is, uh, this town, My Michael's a prolific author. He's authored more books than anybody alive in this city. Seriously. And yet, you go to the, the brick-and-mortar bookstores, can't find the book. Oh, no, no, no. They purposefully do this to him. I'm doing a call of action. Go to your local bookstore and order it that way. Oh, sure, you can order it online, but let's put the bookstores on notice. You've got to start carrying these books. A lot of authors are treated this way, but in this particular case, see, Mike's using, he's using the fiction platform to talk about what's happening today in terms of radical Islam. And he's saying some things here that need to be said. And in fact, they may be better said in a novel rather than on the air. So we'll talk more about that. In fact, this morning on my show on KSFO, I had an unexpected guest. Well, we thought he was going to be calling in a little later, but he called up early. He was excited. He was energetic. This is our conversation earlier today with Michael Savage. Dr. Michael Savage, the brand new book, the best-selling author. The new book is Countdown to Mecca, and he joins us right now live on KSFO. Dr. Savage, please. Well, I'm not going to tell you I fed the seagulls and they're still living even though they love gluten uh, or that the sea levels haven't risen, but I'll just say the sea levels have not risen <laughs> uh, and the seagulls love gluten. Go explain that one. But nevertheless, here I am. 
Nava launched yesterday can't be found in a San Francisco store. It's banned from entering this fair city of liberalism. Wow. Apparently the chain stores reserve their uh, book space for things such as Rebecca has uh, 14 mommies, that kind of thing. But it's a novel. Not- it's a nonfiction novel. I know, but that's not... It's, I mean, it's a, fi- in, in it's, it's a fiction novel, but I mean, it's based on so much historical stuff. I mean, Dr. Savage, this is crazy. Well, here, here you go. I want to entertain your audience, Brian. Ta- your time is so limited. So the book Countdown in Mecca is largely set in San Francisco, as were the previous two novels in the trilogy. Right. I invented a new character called Sammy the Clown, the protagonist's half-brother, former Marine, injured in a motorcycle accident, uh, living on the proceeds. He lives in an apartment building on top of Telegraph Hill, the famous building on Montgomery Street, where Humphrey Bogart... Remember the movie 1947? This I think it was called The Steps or something. You know Telegraph Hill and the Wooden Steps. Anyway, he lives there. It's a classic, yes. Yeah, great building, and there's a chase scene that's astounding with the Russian prostitute who lives across the hall from him as they're running away from the military trying to kill him because she, she overheard something in uh, the S.F. Hilton that she wasn't supposed to hear while working a general, okay? Nevertheless, how did I invent Sammy the Clown? This is a great story for your audience. I've never told it before. I went to dinner two years ago with my friend Danny Horowitz, the great lawyer. You know him. So he has really wonderful young children. I got a little too much wine on a Sunday afternoon in the garden (laughs) of a a Basque restaurant. No such thing as too much wine. (laughs) That's true, especially on a Sunday afternoon in the sun in the in the restaurant so the, the kid was there and i really loved children i wanted to entertain him so i made a crazy hat out of a napkin and i started <laughs> pretending to be a clown i said i'm sammy the clown he has it on video it's amazing oh, no. <laughs> his little boy isaac loved it so much that i started to think about it i said wait a minute sammy the clown what a great character that would be and that's how I invented Sammy the Clown and included him as a main sub-character in, in, in Countdown to Mecca. He plays a big role in the book. But people say, like, how do you invent characters? Well, they're everywhere you turn, inside and outside of a person. There are characters, aren't there? Brian, do you make faces in the mirror in the morning saying, yeah. I make faces at Katie all morning long. Are you kidding me? Yeah, you should see him. Jeez. I mean, think about all the faces we make every day when we don't even know we're making them. Right. Right? To ourselves. Right. Like uh, cooking, we have a face. Going to the bathroom, we have a face. <laughs> and the only, the only beings that see these faces are our pets. Think about what they have to put up with. Right. They're looking at all of this all the time. So anyway, that's a great character uh, who came right out of my head. And I love my character, Anastasia Vincent, the Russian hooker. Who I, and uh, here's a great line. She had the eyes of a Nordic wolf. Is that not descriptive? That's a great one. Hey, we, t- we asked this question earlier amongst ourselves, but we had to ask you, and I'm very serious about this. Where do you find the time to do all of this writing? You have your show. That it's takes a lot of preparation. Else, Where do you find the time? What else is there to do in the 21 hours between shows? There's no life You've been a prolific writer. I mean, you're, you've, you are an incredibly successful, best-selling author. And but take listen, away your radio show, these books would still sell, Michael. But listen, take Isaac Asimov, the great science writer of, what, 20 years ago? He wrote 120 books. Did people accuse him of not writing his books? Right. You know, there's a phony lawyer who follows me on the air. He's a nobody. He sounds like Heinrich Himmler on a bad day. And the Heinrich Himmler of talk radio accuses me of not writing my own books, accuses me of this. He wouldn't have a show if it wasn't for me. So Himmler doesn't understand. Himmler doesn't understand that there are people who are creative. That's something that lawyers can't comprehend. That there are people who actually are creative and prolific. Those words don't enter uh, the minds of the Himmlers of radio. There is a news story we've been just itching to get your uh, Uh comments on. No, I I'm serious now. Savage, for whatever reason, you're, I know you're busy with the book tour, I got that, but you're actually taking the day off from the broadcast, right? I wanted to talk with you about it. I feel better. Would you mind if I did my show? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to have Brian fill in for me. I was so sick yesterday. <laughs> so Brian was going to work a 50-hour day today. Brian, would you, be, would you be angry at me, or you want to come on hey. as a guest or something? My, Michael, this is what friends are for, right? Okay, no, this I is what up. friends are for. 
I, I feel okay. great. I, I went to I, You Canada. sound great. Are you kidding me? That's why... Okay, so all that said, you have to comment on this story for us. Now, we have limited time, but I just want... Sherry, could you please... I just want to get his... I, I love it when Savage just gives us what he's thinking. Give us... Uh, Harry, give us um, Arnie Duncan, the Secretary of Education. Listen to what he said yesterday, Michael. The one idea I threw out that I uh, wanted to sort of road test it with the kids do, I thought, is the idea of public boarding schools. And that's a little bit of a you know, different idea or a controversial idea. But the oh, question God. is, do we have some children where there's not a mom, there's not a dad, there's not a grandma, there's just nobody home? And there are certain kids we should have 24-7 to really create a safe environment and give them a chance. <laughs> Public boarding schools, Michael. Public well, I, well, boarding you, schools. I went to boarding schools, so it's the reverse. The optic chiasma is, is distorted in the mind of a sick, psychotic, demented liberal. State boarding schools? I think mm-hmm. that was tried in Nazi Germany and other states, it, uh, nations. I think uh, Stalin had state boarding schools to in, indoctrinate the children. And Arnie Duncan <laughs> has a captive audience of little children to play with if he has them in state boarding schools where nobody can watch him. Any other questions? This, it's no, sick. this is... Uh, These are it sick, is sick. Sick but people Michael, belong in prison. Now I've got you going. Oh, See, all the more reason for you to do your own me? show today. Okay, you got me going, so you're going to fill in then. My voice just went. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you tell me what you want me to do, and I'll be there for you, Michael Savage. You know that. Oh, man, I don't know. I can't say... <laughs> What, how do you write all this stuff? How do you do the shows? Here was a day I was supposed to take off because I wasn't feeling well. No, I can't you sound do it great because now. I feel well. So I have to work. I have to work. I have to work. What else is there? Okay, know, you know, have I know, to. I know, I know. Golf, tennis. And you no, probably love you. golf. I get it. And you're no, no you, here's what you do. Savage, here's what you do. It's the three V's. I, I'm, I'm sworn to live by the three V's now because of you. Right? Oh, the, the three, three V's. V's. They Vi- work. I swear to God, that's yeah. why I got better today. Someone yeah. said to me, how do you do it? I said, the three V's. Vitamins, vodka, and vitriol. It works. <laughs> <laughs> all right, M- Michael, I'm about to kick you off the air. We've got to take a break. Thanks for joining us. All right, you tell me what you want me to do, and have a great day either way, all right? Countdown to Mecca. Thank you, my friends. That's Michael Savage on my morning show this morning on KSFO. <laughs> I love it. And by the way, the, the, the female voice you heard there is my beautiful sidekick, comedian at Katie Green. She just does an awesome job. And quite frankly, she brings in the younger, younger male demographic for us quite well. <laughs> but one of our treats is, out of the blue, Savage will just call. It's, it's great. We, we have a lot of wonderful guests, but when you get uh, somebody like Savage just out of the blue calling because he's a listener, it's pretty cool stuff. Count down to mecca we'll talk more about this now uh and then by the way obviously michael decided to take the day after off after all because he has been working so much promoting the book which just came out yesterday if you're just joining us some of the things we've been talking about today and we're going to delve into these in greater detail so you heard our conversation with savage secretary of education Artie duncan wants public boarding schools that's got a lot of you fired up we'll get to your calls momentarily we got Democrat Congressman Hank Johnson basically threatening us. The poor are going to rise up. It's going to be like Baltimore all over again because of the GOP's proposed budget. We've got that. A lot of you very concerned about you should be, as you should be, regarding the military conducting joint exercises with SWAT teams on domestic soil. What is that all about? Does that not defy passe comitatus? Talk about that. Obamacare, unraveling before our very eyes in the state exchanges. I th- California was the latest until today. We're finding out that Hawaii is absolutely caving. So that's another story we're going to be getting to. We haven't talked about this, and we'll save it for the next hour for sure, if not sooner. Hillary Clinton, another scandal, another scandal. Well, quid pro quo looks scandalous to me. This involving Boeing and the Clinton Foundation. You're going to hear about that coming up on the broadcast. Boy, I'll tell you something. If you're a terrorist, don't try to do it in Texas. You don't want to be an Islamic terrorist in Texas because we saw what happened to that those guys, right, at the Cartoon Fest. 
now we're getting further details. We were led to believe initially that this was just a lone, well, that it was one cop who fired the shots that killed these guys. Folks, it was an entire SWAT team. And there was an exchange of bullets from both directions. Oh, my God. Dozens of bullets flying from these terrorists. Did the administration ever come out and say these guys were Islamic terrorists? I don't think so. Did they ever go that far? I don't believe so. We'll talk about that as well. Reading a story this morning from the Los Angeles Times regarding ICE not being allowed to do its jobs in the jails of Los Angeles County. In other words, when there are suspected illegal aliens or known illegal aliens, ICE is kicked out. They're not allowed to go at them. Then I have another question. I'm scanning the wires. Could somebody help me out here? The Republicans had a plan to push this uh, abortion ban after 20 weeks. Bill, did that go through? I can't find anything on it. They were supposed to be voting today. We'll do the research. We'll try to get to all that for you. We'll be taking your calls. Uh, Of course, the phone number here on the Savage Nation with Brian Sussman filling in is 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Your calls and more coming up next. Brian Sussman in for Michael on this, the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage. Michael off today, but he'll be back tomorrow. The book Countdown to Mecca is out. And I will just tell you this briefly. When you think about the terrorist attack at the Draw Mohammed event in Garland, Texas, and the media criticism of Pam Geller who organized that, along with the subsequent Department of Homeland Security warnings about further, quote-unquote, lone wolf attacks. What Michael has put together is for now. It's for such a time as this. Countdown to Mecca. We have been talking, among other things, about how this train wreck in Pennsylvania is providing cover for the train wreck that is the Barack Obama administration. Uh, They're out there talking down wealthy people, successful people. They're talking about the war on poverty. Unless something's done properly, the the poor are going to rise up. There are going to be more riots in the streets. Fernando checks in right now, listening from the San Francisco Bay Area. Fernando, you're on the Michael Savage Show. Please, go ahead. Uh Uh-oh. Comments on the liberals and their fascination, the machinations of uh, poverty. And I like to use the example of why people ask, well, what's in it? For? Oh, we're having problems with the line. Drop it. Can't wait. Uh, we'll continue with, well, here's something else we've been talking about. We'll get into this in further detail in the next hour. But just a little teaser in case you're just joining us. Harney Duncan, Secretary of Education, has come out now saying he's for public boarding schools. Public boarding schools. Let's go to James out on the left coast. James, you're on the Savage Show. Go right ahead. Hey, thank you for having me on. Um, I just want to point out that the state boarding schools, they did that in 1870 with the Native Americans, and it was called the federal boarding schools. They took the kids away from their parents and forced them to live in these, and if they spoke their own language or acted in their own ways, they were beat and even put to death. I know this for a fact because I'm a survivor of one of the boarding school students. I can't. So, so I mean, well, so how did that work out for us? It didn't work out well at all. See, we should learn from the past, but the problem is the liberal ideology refuses to look at the template of history. It's like Marx said, history means nothing. And why should we even have a federal department of education to begin with? We'll talk more about this. Can't wait for the final hour. Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage on this. The Savage Nation. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. (laughs) 
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Brian Sussman filling in for Dr. Savage, 855-400-SAVAGE. That's 855-400-7282, The Savage Nation. Michael's involved with his book tour. He's been very, very busy taking the day off. But we are here for you, and the lines are open. We're awaiting the National Transportation Safety Board. They're going to have a press conference momentarily regarding the deadly Amtrak derailment. Seven dead, 200 injured. It looks terrible, of course. The media has been all over this one. Uh, It's a terrible story, there's no question. Having worked in television news for many, many years, I know if it bleeds, it leads. And, of course, in situations such as this, the politicians love it because run, duck, and cover. This provides them with an opportunity to continue doing what they're doing without having the names in the headlines, like Hillary Clinton. My goodness, Hillary There is a congresswoman that I really like. Marsha Blackburn is her name. She's from Tennessee. She's working on building congressional support right now to pressure the IRS to investigate the tax-exempt status of the Clinton Foundation. Wouldn't that be nice? Now, this comes on the heels of another report I saw earlier today. This is from Fox. When Hillary was, of course, Secretary of State, America's top diplomat, There were times where she appeared as if she was a salesperson for our biggest airplane maker, Boeing. So she would travel abroad on official business as Secretary of State and then visit Boeing facilities around the world. And she would make a pitch for the host country to buy Boeing jets. For example, 2010, Shanghai. She boasted that more than half the commercial jetliners operating in China are made by Boeing. Now... I'm all for selling American stuff overseas. I love it. And these are big ticket items. Okay, I get that. But wait, there's more. She's touring a Boeing plant in Russia in 2009. And she said, we're delighted that a new Russian airline, Russia, is actively considering acquisition of Boeing aircraft. And this is a shameless pitch, she said with a smile. Boeing landed this Russian deal in 2010. So 2009, she makes what she called the shameless pitch. 2010, Boeing lands the Russian deal. It's worth $3.7 million. And two months later, Boeing donates $900,000 to the Clinton Foundation. Little quid pro quo, huh, between the Clinton Foundation, the State Department, and Boeing. Certainly that's the way it looks to me. So it's interesting because the company, Boeing, in a question that they were answering from Fox News, uh, they defended the company's action with this, you know, almost a million dollars to the Clinton Foundation after they secure this big deal. So they say, our Clint, our contribution, here's their memo to Fox News, our contribution to the Clinton Foundation to help the people of Haiti rebuild was a transparent act of compassion and an investment aimed at aiding the long-term interests and hopes of the Haitian people. The company also pointed out that it gave the American Red Cross $1.3 million after the devastating 2010 earthquake. You don't give money to the Clinton Foundation because you want to see good work done around the world. In the case of Haiti, there are organizations you could have given money to, like perhaps the American Red Cross, or the Salvation Army, or other organizations, I'm sure, who make sure that as much of that dollar you give as possible actually goes to work on the ground. The Clinton Foundation, the percentage that they actually put to use is pathetic. If you really cared about doing good, you would give to one of these other organizations. But come on now, this is buying influence. In this particular case, it could have been a nice little thank you very much. Let's feather your nest now. Uh, By the way, Boeing also paid Bill Clinton $250,000 for a speech in 2012. And that speech was approved by the State Department, Hillary Clinton. So Hillary signs off on Bill getting a payday of $250,000 for a speech that's written by somebody else that he's delivered who knows how many times. Oh, by the way, listen to this. Boeing's chief lobbyist 
is former Clinton aide Tom, uh, Tim Keating. My, isn't this convenient? This is so sick. This, th- this is why people don't want to go into politics, because it's just gross. It's scummy. Other headlines in the news today. This is a good one. Let them eat bugs. Kofi Marie Antoinette Anon. This is a story out of Investors.com, right up my alley, being a former TV meteorologist back in the day. United Nations Secretary General Kofi Annan recently said if it were up to him, he would reduce the major threat to the climate posed by global livestock. So in other words, it's all these PETA people, people for the ethical treatment of animals, or people for the eating of tasty animals, as I like to say. That's what I am. I'm a PETA. I'm a person for the eating of tasty animals. But he says that a major threat to our climate is livestock, the livestock industry, the eating of meat. So what he's saying is we need to raise insects as an animal protein source. This is where we are today, folks. All right, I got a couple pieces of sound for you. You ready for this? Here we go. Let's begin with a clip that... Savage was on my morning program in San Francisco today. I played this clip for him live on the air. And as he's listening to this for the first time, it's very early in the morning. He listens to this for the first time, and you can hear him in the background say, oh, my God. All right. So this is Education Secretary Arnie Duncan. The one idea I threw out that I wanted to sort of road test it with the kids who they thought is the idea of public boarding schools. And that's a little bit of a different idea or a controversial idea. But the question is, do we have some children where there's not a mom, there's not a dad, there's not a grandma, there's just nobody home? And there are certain kids we should have 24-7 to really create a safe environment and give them a chance. (laughs) Give them a chance to be successful. Give them a chance to be successful. It was an awkward applause. You could tell by looking at the video, the people, they're excited about this because they've never heard anybody say this before because this is what they've always dreamed of. Now you can indoctrinate them, re-educate them, uh, turn them into full-time liberal drones 24-7. So the clapping is like, yeah, 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 I like, whoa, whoa. can I clap? Should I clap? It was weird. That was one of the weirdest statements. 855-400-7282. This was at the National Summit on Youth Violence Prevention. So let's round them up and house them, teach them 24-7. You're going to be teaching them math? You're going to be teaching them science? No, you're going to be teaching them liberal doctrine. And maybe Pat on WFNC in North Carolina has a little clue as to what this may be also about. Pat, thanks for joining us. Go ahead. Oh, thank you for taking my call. My thought on this is, besides it, you know, replacing the foster care system, is this enables a lot more unaccompanied minors to come across the border and easy housing. Sure. So Absolutely. You've got, you're going to have the housing. You'll have an ability to now indoctrinate them so they never grab hold of the American ethos. You're going to have them lock, stock, and barrel as a voting block and as a group of drones that are there at your beck and command. Absolutely, Pat. And, you know, this way they don't even have to worry about where the funding comes from. It's part of the educational system. And who could argue with educating these young people? So it just opens the borders more and more, gets more of these young people, these future Democrats over. And then they can also take our children that are getting conservative views at home and add them to the mix. Well, that would be the ultimate goal. And, Pat, at the same time, what does this do to the breakup of the American family? Because this has always been a goal of the Communist Party in the United States of America, decimate the American family. And they're doing a pretty damn good job of it, aren't they? They sure are. And for people that tend to be the most sensitive to the poor people, I've worked inner city, and I've done talks at schools educating them about different medical issues. I'm a physician. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you that the parents had standing room only. The parents want to be educated about what's healthy for their children. It's a misnomer that the poor families can't or won't take good care of their children. They're just as concerned as all of us are. Appreciate your call. Thank you, Pat, from North Carolina. 
Richard is in Virginia. Richard, I just told you about the United Nations, their former chief, Kofi Annan, saying, we don't need to eat meat. We need to start eating insects. Go ahead, please. Well, I think it's been a pretty recent development that everybody started eating so much processed food and so much livestock and that sort of thing. So really, is it really that far out? Just be sort of getting back to your roots, honestly, almost. Well, I don't know if you're getting back. I think the last time I looked in my mouth, I have teeth that were made for eating meat. I'm just telling you, meat is the most efficient form of protein there is. All right. Sounds like you've got your stance on it. I just think that it's not that far out. Well, listen, if you want to eat insects, that's your business. Um, I, I, on this one, I think Moses was right. Okay, He was, he was right on a lot of things regarding diet, in my opinion. But... Hey, listen, Richard, at the same time, maybe some of you will say, you've been in California too long, dude. When I eat meat, I want really good meat. I look for meat that's void of additives, hormones, etc. You've got to pay a little bit more for that, but I do believe it's better for you. I've listened to my doctor over the years. I'm not eating as much red meat as I would like. Cholesterol has gone down as a result. Okay, I get that. Everything in moderation. If you want to eat grasshoppers, if you want to eat ants, if you want to eat worms... That's your business, but count me out. Count me in for Michael Savage's new book, Countdown to Mecca. Folks, this is the third book in the trilogy, and it has to do, if I could just encapsulate this, think of a plane bound for Jordan, crashing into the Caspian Sea, no survivor, survivors save a Russian mercenary who hijacked the flight, and a cask containing an agent of unprecedented destructive potential missing from the wreckage. This is how Countdown to Mecca starts, and it continues. It's big time, folks, and it's in stores now. Countdown to Mecca by Michael Savage. Brian Sussman filling in on this, The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Countdown to Mecca, available in stores now. Brian Sussman filling in for the author of the book, Countdown to Mecca. Michael Savage on this, The Savage Nation. Mike's back tomorrow. Now, we can easily give you a summary of some of the things we've been talking about, some of the bigger issues, by taking three calls. And we have ample time to do this if everyone's quick. First, let's go to Pat in Hartford, WDRC. Pat, you heard Obama talk about, you know, the rich people in this country. They're life's lottery winners. Go ahead, please. Yeah, uh, Mrs. Obama and Mr. Obama are the luckiest uh, life's lottery winners of anybody. I mean, uh, look at the look at the trips they go on. Look at the lifetime security they get. Mm -hmm. Look at the amount of money they get. Mm -hmm. Who are they to point fingers at anyone else? Oh yeah, and Pat, you know, Obama made up made uh, the lion's share of his money to date on books that some would arguably say he didn't even write. Okay, he had ghost writers for these things. You're right. He's He's the luckiest guy on the planet in terms of money, and they're living large, and they're in charge. Pat, thanks for your call. Phil is in Florida, WFTL. Kofi Annan, the former chief of the U.N., saying, well, because of global warming, we've got to stop eating meat. He's encouraging people to eat bugs. Phil, go ahead. Well, I, I think this is a great point. Uh, I, I know a lot of people who are brainwashed by the whole liberal agenda and fanatical believers of the global warming. And uh, my favorite response is, so why are you still eating meat? Why haven't you stopped eating meat, which is the single uh, biggest thing you could do as an individual if you're that concerned about it. You could do it today. Right. You, you, could, you, could, stop. you could stop eating meat right now. And then you could stop ever flying in an airplane ever, ever again. And after that, why don't you go out and spend money you don't have to buy an electric car? Oh, I'm sorry. In most parts of the country, electric cars are fueled by fossil fuels. That doesn't really count. Thanks for your call there. I want to remind you of the book Countdown to Mecca. It is available in the stores. Uh, and the plot, this is, this is the third book in the trilogy. 
Now think about this. You you have a potential attack on Mecca. And this has got to be stopped, otherwise the world is going to blow up. The, the liberals who are criticizing this book will say, oh, my God, Savage wants to blow up Mecca. No, 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 no. Read the book. He doesn't want Mecca to blow up. That'll start a world war. Especially in this day and age when all these countries, you know, Pakistan's got the nuke. Saudi Arabia could buy a nuke right on down the line. Iran wants a nuke, right? Well, the one guy who might be able to stop this act, this attack is Jack Hatfield. He's this freelance reporter. You know him from Michael's writings in the past. And he's never shied away from controversy after making a politically incorrect statement about Islamic extremists, like a few talk show hosts have done over the years. He's been discredited now as a journalist and le left to pick up the pieces of his career and he's able to prove himself in this book. I can't tell you more. I can't tell you anymore. Otherwise, I'm going to give away the plot. And I don't want to do that, especially when it's a great read. Brisk read. Page Turner. So that is Savage's Countdown to Mecca. And it's available in the bookstores now. I highly encourage, with all of these great authors who are putting together books on topics that are so controversial in the eyes of the mainstream, to buy these in the stores because we need to put the stores on notice that people like these books. They really do like them. And we don't like it when the stores either don't order the book, even though it may be a bestseller, or order the book and allow it to be buried in the back of the bookstore. Let's make sure that does not happen with this particular book. We're coming up on the final half hour of the program. And I'm really looking forward to diving into all of the big issues of the day. Brian Sussman, filling in for Michael Savage. The phone numbers, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. This is the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage, The Savage Nation. Countdown to Mecca, available in stores now. It's Michael's book, the third in the trilogy, the novel. Under the threat of a third world war, nothing matters except the mission, and it is a page turner. Countdown to Mecca. The phone number is 855-400-7282. 855-400-7282. I want to play a clip. Mike's producers have been able to add to today's audio. This guy, he's a Democrat congressman from Georgia, Hank Johnson. So you're going to hear him say something about the poor. You know, right now it's all about rich versus poor, inequality, pay inequality, job inequality, etc. So here he is saying, oh, you know, the situation in Baltimore? No, 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 that had nothing to do with the police. It had to do with the poor. In fact, we could just say it had to do with the po. People are so so po they can't afford the two letters at the end of the word. They're po, not poor po. Listen to him here in clip four, please. And I'll tell you, the free marketers have been uh, winning of late, and uh, it's to the detriment of this country. And if we're not careful, the have-nots in this country will rise up like the people in Baltimore. You can say that it's in response to police. Uh, it's a reaction to uh, a police uh, excessive use of force. But actually, what happened in Baltimore stems from, uh, from deeper economic issues. Deeper economic issues. Well, I'm glad to hear it's not the police. Deeper economic issues. Then it has to be the Democrats and their liberal policies. They've run cities like Detroit for decades. You'd think it would be Valhalla, heaven on earth, utopian society. What happened? Mr. Hank Johnson, Congressman Georgia. This is a guy who, well, hmm, let's just say he's not the brightest light bulb in the shop, perhaps. Not, not the smartest tool in the shed. Uh, he is one oar out of the water. What is the taco line? One... He's one fry short of a Happy Meal, you know, one tortilla shy of a taco. I don't know. He's, this guy, he's not the brightest. Remember that? Remember what he said about Guam? 
The guys, oh, the guys running the show reminded me. Guys, My let's fear remind our is listeners that uh, the whole island will uh, become so overly populated that it will tip over and uh, and capsize. Uh, that wasn't a joke. That was Congressman Hank Johnson. Guam will become so. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a joke. He says Guam would become... Play it again. No, people are driving home from work. They're driving wherever. Two hands on the wheel, please. You have to hear this again. My fear is that uh, the whole island will uh, become so overly populated that it will tip over and, uh, and capsize. This is a Congress. We have 435 of these people in the House. You'd think they'd be among our best and brightest. Uh, what was the other one you guys found? He's talking about the balloon industry. Is this correct? It's the balloon industry? The helium industry. This okay, bill, let's... which shows that this Tea Party Congress will make the tough choice to keep children's birthday parties on schedule and give industries that rely on helium the lift that they deserve. Imagine, Mr. Speaker, a world without balloons. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> this guy is cracked. All righty. Then you had Kofi Annan. I don't have audio of this. But he's out there talking about it. He's the former U.N. chief saying, nope, nope, uh, the major cause of global warming on the planet, human beings, especially humans eating meat, got to stop the livestock industry, and instead we got to start eating bugs. Charlie is in Pennsylvania. Charlie, go right ahead. Thanks for calling us from WSBA. Yes, my, my point is, is that, for example, if an insect has the same protein value as a piece of beef, in order to feed a person, you would have to produce as many pounds of insects as you do in a bee. And that insect has to consume, and that insect has to breathe, and it has to expire. So what you're doing is you're just trading one source of, let's say, carbon dioxide for another source. It's, the whole thing's ridiculous. Good point. Charlie, you know how to do the math. And again, that's why I say meat is the most efficient form of protein on the planet. Thanks for calling us on, on the Michael Savage Show, Savage Nation. Craig is in Georgia. Oh, Craig, you're in Georgia, so I'm just curious. Are you in Hank Johnson's district? No, praise the Lord, thank not. <laughs> <laughs> how do, seriously, how do people like this, and there are many of them, how do you think they get elected into the Congress year after year? Um, evidently, where he lives, the constituent is just as uh, dense as he is. Oh, well said, Craig and Georgia. Thanks for checking in. And then we have Obama. Now, he's out there. We we could play this, and we will. In fact, there's a couple other clips we didn't get to. Let's see here. Here's Obama. He's talking about life's lottery winners. Life's lottery winners. He said, you know, we got all these people. They're hedge fund managers, etc. Let's play the hedge fund clip. This is clip 15. Go. The top 25 hedge fund managers made... Uh, more than all the kindergarten teachers in the country. So I'm not, when I say that, I'm not saying that because I dislike hedge fund managers or I think they're evil. Uh, I'm saying that you're paying a lower rate than a lot of folks who are making $300,000 a year. Uh, he doesn't know, understand the difference between, for example, income and assets. If you've got a stock portfolio that makes a million dollars in one particular year, you're not taxed on that unless you cash the stock. Then you're cast based on capital gains. If you're drawing a salary, that's a different thing altogether. But beyond that, the, the wealthier folks in this country, people with higher incomes, pay the lion's share of taxes, as we talked about earlier in the broadcast. One case in point, you've got 10% of the wage earners of this country, they're making $125,000 or more. They're, making, they're paying about 70% of all income taxes. Give me a break. 
Let's continue with Obama as he tries to pit uh, the haves versus the have-nots. By the way, I love the have-not stories in this country. This sto- this country is made up of those stories, of individuals who had squat, had nothing, and now they've got a lot in terms of cash and assets, etc. They've uh, Another one, and I mentioned this earlier, but if you're just tuning in, I'll mention it again. How many people have you met? I know I've met tons who come to this country with very little in their pockets, not even a formal education, and they find ways to make bank. They understand money. They know how to save it. They know how to grow it. They know how to leverage it. Other people who have been here for generations with PhDs, multiple PhDs, they have no idea how to make money, but they know how to spend it. They'll spend 110% of what they make. Here is Obama going after this again. This is clip 17, please. If we can't ask from society's lottery winners to just make that modest investment in taxes, then really this conversation is for show. If if, if we can't ask that. You're right. And the conversation is for show. And it's for you as an ideologue represented the Democrat Party to put forward the socialist meme. That's what this is all about. Society's lottery winners. Right. Right. These are people who are working their butts off, in most cases, to get what they've got, so to speak. Ray is calling from the left coast on this, the Savage Nation. Go ahead, Ray. Brian, it's great to hear you on national radio. He was talking about the top 25 hedge fund managers making more than all the kindergarten teachers. Did you know that the top 25 Obama donors to his campaign make more than all the teachers combined? Did you know that if you took all 25 of Obama's top 25 campaign fundraising events and they've raised more money than would pay all of the teachers in the United States? Here's a man who set out to raise a billion dollars before the last election. And how much of that did he give to kindergarten teachers if he cares so much? And think about this, Brian. This, this is a guy who said, you know, the lottery winners and the lucky ones in life. I think he really believes this. I don't think it's just a leftist Marxist line. When he says you didn't build that, he's actually saying I didn't build that. And he's projecting himself onto all of the rest of this country because he knows he didn't build a damn thing, and therefore he feels guilty about it. And so he'll just project that onto all the rest of us to make himself feel good about it. I'm hanging up on myself. Thank you very much. This is something that you hear on a regular basis from so many liberals. They actually do feel guilty. I think this is the case with people in Hollywood. Let's be realistic. In Hollywood, especially, while there are some excellent actors who have very, worked very hard uh, regarding their craft and have made career moves that have been very, very important to risky times. I get that. There are some. But there are others. Others who just got lucky. They got lucky via a casting couch. They got lucky. They just got discovered. They've got a look. They can't act. Whatever the case may be. Some of these people turn into the biggest libs on the planet. I think it's because they feel so guilty. Where, in fact, they shouldn't feel guilty at all. They should say, you know what? This is, this is one heck of a country. Look at me. Marginal skills. Certainly no marketable skills other than my looks. I just happen to get discovered. Ha! Ah, what a country! But they look at it completely different, don't they? By the way, speaking of a guy who's worth 56 or 54, 54 billion Fifty-four billion. That's Larry Ellison, the Oracle founder. Larry Ellison. Now, here's a guy. He didn't get lucky. Well, I mean, there may have been a few "quote unquote" lucky moves along the way, but this is a guy who took risks. He is a strategic business thinker. He understands money, the likes of which many of us will never. He understands business, how to grow a business, leadership, select team members, come up with ideas. The guy is brilliant. Clearly. My goodness, guess who he's backing here? Marco Rubio. Ellison's going to be holding a fundraiser for the Florida Republican at his mansion uh, here in the San Francisco Bay Area, June 9th. VIP reception, photo op, $2,700 per person. It will also include a host committee dinner for couples who've raised $27,000. Now, last year, he featured another, uh, he supported another person, at a fundraiser, and that would be Rand Paul. So Larry Ellison. Larry Ellison. Coming up on the Savage Nation. 
uh, we're going to talk about a subject that many of you want to weigh in on still. So there's one more segment to do that. That's the Obama education plan, public boarding schools. We will talk about that. I'd also like to talk to you about Countdown to Mecca. This is Savage's new book, just out, hit the bookstores yesterday. I want to make sure you order this book. I suggest you go to a bookstore to do this. Because we need to let the bookstores go on notice. There are many thousands of people who want this book. And you're not going to be able to hide it in the back of the store. Or maybe just hide it by not purchasing copies. It's the trilogy, so you probably want to purchase all three of the books from this trilogy. It's a great book, but a countdown to war, a countdown to Mecca, I should say. Uh, This is a book that's very, very timely. It's a carefully plotted script that begins with a terrorist plot unfolding when a plane bound for Jordan crashes in the Caspian Sea. Only one survivor, this Russian mercenary, And also on board the flight and now missing is a cask containing some type of unprecedented destructive material. And by the way, if you've never been to San Francisco, or maybe if you have, this is a fantastic book because it's set in San Francisco and it gives you details of the city that really only a a true local would have knowledge of. So it's brilliant in that way as well. Anyway... It's a great read. Countdown to Mecca. Michael Savage. Brian Sussman filling in on this, the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Brian Sussman in for Michael Savage, the Savage Nation. Countdown to Mecca. His book is available in stores now. He's back on the air tomorrow. Uh, By the way... Senator Rand Paul has been able to read the trade bill, the fast track bill. It's a secret bill. He's not even allowed to tell us what's in it. The only thing he's allowed to tell us is that it's 800 pages long. I don't think he likes what he sees. There are a lot of questions. There are a lot of questions. Is this going to reduce or increase the trade deficit? Is it going to reduce or increase employment and wages? We don't know. It's secret. It's secret. They're doing this in secret behind our backs, folks. Uh, This is probably meant to be behind our back, but it came out yesterday. Here's Arnie Duncan, the Secretary of Education. Listen to what he says. Play it one more time, please. The one idea I threw out that I uh, wanted to sort of road test it with the kids who they thought is the idea of public boarding schools. And that's a little bit of a you know, different idea or a controversial idea. But the question is, do we have some children where there's not a mom, there's not a dad, there's not a grandma, there's just nobody home? And there are certain kids we should have 24-7 to really create a safe environment and give them a chance. Regina is listening from New Mexico. Regina, your comments on that statement quickly, please. Yes, uh, here in New Mexico, we have quite a few Native Americans, and I have a Native American art business, so I've been told the story about what happened to them when they were forced into boarding schools. And yes. Mostly, mostly the Catholic Church, and one man I do business with, he told me they, they tried to turn him into a little priest. That's how he put it. Okay, so here's what will happen now. They're not going to turn them into little priests other than they're going to be priests of darkness and priests of the liberal ideology. That's what they want these kids for. Thanks for your call. Savage is back tomorrow. Countdown to Mecca is available in stores now. This is, of course, the end of the trilogy. Under the threat of a third world war, nothing matters except the mission. Buy the book. Get the rest of the story. Brian Sussman, pleased to have filled in for Michael Savage on this, The Savage Nation.